Welcome to TalkNorth.com. Thanks to our longtime producer, Brandon Morton. Please download before you listen. If you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach us at TalkNorthPodcast at gmail.com. And please follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod. Uh, two promo codes to be aware of. BiteSquad.com. Use the promo code TalkNorth to get your first delivery free. And go to SodaStick.com, the great local apparel company. Use the promo code YouBetcha to get free shipping on any sized order. Roy, today I'm going to check myself and some of the things I talk about a lot when it comes to payrolls and paying pitchers and giving out big contracts because we have a very interesting postseason going on right now. This is Roy Smalley's uh, Chin Music, part of the TalkNorth.com podcast network. Please follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod. Uh, we're going to be putting all kinds of information out on that uh, feed in the future, including show times and maybe some giveaways and some other news about the business as we go forward. Thank you to BarryCoffee.com. Tony Hoagland, your State Farm Agent Champlin, and BiteSquad.com. So, as you know, Roy, I, I understand a lot of the philosophical arguments for not overpaying players. And right now it's easy to say, look, Harper didn't make it to the postseason. Machado didn't make it to the postseason. Kimbrell didn't make it to the postseason. When the Twins did bid high, you know, pretty high on you, Darvish, he ended up not really performing all that well on a, a very large deal. And we all know that a lot of the biggest contracts in baseball history – pretty much busts, either because of player performance or team performance during that contract. Uh, we also know that the Joe Maurer contract, you know, kind of bogged down the twins. And we know that both Terry Ryan and Derek Falvey, who come from really completely different backgrounds, both think it's foolish to commit too much of a percentage of your payroll to any one player. That being said, for the uh, all four teams in the LCS are in the top eight of payroll, and the Washington Nationals uh, spent big on Max Scherzer as a free agent. And while they didn't spend big money on, on Bryce Harper, they went out and got Patrick Corbin uh, for, I think, six years, $140 million, which is kind of an under, you know, it's a big contract to be under the radar, but it's still somewhat under the radar. And you see Verlander at, at a very high rate pitching for the Astros, and then Jarrett Cole, you know, pitching great for the Astros. He's about to become the next high paid player in major league baseball. So what, I guess, how do you view our conversations about payroll and what the poll should do, and what Falvey should do in light of this postseason? A lot of interesting things uh, going on there, you know, inherent in that, in that question, right? Because um, let's talk about a uh, specific player that would, would fill a specific need. The twins need pitching. There's no question about that. They thought so before last year, and after what happened this year uh, it, it, with guys uh, stepping forward offensively, uh, they, they certainly f- must feel that way uh, this year. And, and you look at the teams that w- were uh, in the playoffs, and all of the pitching staffs were, you know, were better. Uh, so, and, and the people, the, the, the teams that are going to be in the World Series are going to have terrific pitching staff. So uh, they, they need pitching. And Cole is, in my mind, one of the most intriguing guys uh, to come along as a free agent in a long time. He's 29 years old. He's the best pitcher in the game. There's not a doubt in my mind. Uh, he's tough uh, mentally, uh, uh, you can tell. And he's got great stuff. In the seventh inning, I, it, um, the other day, yesterday, I guess it was, uh, he was throwing 100 miles an hour. He had thrown 100 pitches. His 106th pitch was a fastball at 100. Um, he's got a wipeout slider and a decent changeup. He is the best pitcher in the game. So that would, for a team that feels like it can contend in 2020 and beyond, then it, he's an intriguing guy being only 29 years old you can imagine him he's also been he, he's also been pretty healthy and his pitching mechanics would appear to me to be solid in terms of not doing anything that would put extra stress on his arm for example so uh, it's he's obviously going to be the premier free agent and the twins are going to have a hard time 
uh, winning that derby, uh, the, the Cole Derby. Um, so in light of what you said about paying too much, this might be one of those guys that you would, uh, you would consider because there are, there are guys that can make a difference in the lineup. There are guys that obviously can make a difference on the mound. And when you need somebody to make a difference on the mound, it's kind of the time to, to do that. The question is, you know, what's it going to take? We don't have any idea. And uh, someone, uh, after listening to our podcast, a loyal listener uh, brought up, you know, just you know, go ahead and spend two hundred million dollars for seven years on on coal. Um, be, you have to step up and do that. What the the first problem with that is that you don't know that two hundred million is going to be the number. <laughs> it could right. be two hundred and fifty million. I mean, you you really don't know. I mean, with what he's done, with what teams have to spend, other than the Twins, you know, you don't know what the ultimate offer is going to be <clears throat> and that gets us to two uh, the two things that are kind of confounding the whole discussion one is that baseball will never truly get past uh the, all of this stuff until they have a true salary cap uh so that it's it's more equi- equitable across the you know across the line uh across all the teams and i don't know if that's ever going to happen but you know, the, for the team like the Yankees or the Red Sox or the Dodgers or somebody that uh, wanted who have gigantic local TV and radio revenue, who don't have to open their their doors uh, to one fan, they don't have to sell one hot dog all season long, and they can make their payroll based on local TV and radio uh, revenue uh, in, in addition to the, uh, the uh, Major League Baseball revenue. They they just are. They, I mean, they they look at the penalty, the luxury tax, and they go, eh, fine, it's just part of the salary. You know, we want Garrett uh, Cole, and and you know that's that's it. We get we're going to get him. The second part of that is you know people's tendency to say, yeah, well the poll ads ought to just step up and spend more money. They got to, they need to quit being cheap about that. And I I can't talk uh, to and with those people because nobody, nobody, if they were in the poll ed situation would say, I'm running a business and I'm going to run it at a, at a substantial loss because the, you know, the community needs, uh, needs to have a, a, uh, this player on the, on the team, nobody who gripes at the poll ads, if they were in the situation, that situation would do that. And you just, that's not, that's not the way business works. That's not the way human nature uh, works. So I, I'm going to I'm going to put that aside and get to your final your other point finally, uh, which is how much of whatever the payroll is. Let's say the the poll ads go absolutely uh, crazy in terms of saying sky's the limit with payroll up to a certain ceiling in the sky. I mean, let's say from 140 million they go to 200 million, whatever it is, on an annual uh, basis, then. The, then it's incumbent on Derek Falvey and Thad Levine to say, okay, if we pay in, in our example here, uh, coal 200 million over seven years, if that were the number, and I bet it's going to be higher, that's $28.5 million a year uh, for seven, every year for seven years, including when he's 34, 35, and 36. And including some years where all of a sudden you're going to have to pay some young players that are stepping forward for you right now a lot of money also. So all of a sudden that 200, whatever they raise the payroll to be, you're starting to bump up against it uh, because you're paying somebody 28 and a half you know, million bucks. And, and to your point, we saw how it hamstrung uh, them a little bit with, with Joe. So at some point there is a ceiling to the payroll. I mean, I've, I don't know what it is. It's not my place to say what it is. I think the poll ads will pay uh, a lot of money for somebody that uh, their front office convinces them can really make a difference. And because the twins made money, a lot more money this year than they thought they would. I mean, they're way over, they were way over their budget for attendance and it just goes to show what will happen if you have a good team. So there is that, you know, they, they're likely to uh, spend a lot of money. Are they, can they spend as much as the Yankees? No, never. Not going to happen until they have a um, 
uh, until they have a, a, uh, a salary cap of some kind or a little bit more equitable across the line. So those are all the issues that have to be taken into consideration. And, and um, it's, it's, compl- it's complex. Yeah, it is. And I want to get a little more into that. We do want to thank Barry Coffee, BarryCoffee.com. I just had my French roast out of my the machine that I bought from Barry Coffee that grinds the beans and heats the water. It just makes it really simple. It's even simple to clean, even for an idiot like me. I can put a little pellet in there and make it work. Uh, you know, I, I don't like complexity in anything. And I have a machine that operates beautifully and makes the best coffee I've ever had. And I favor the, the French roast. I know uh, Roy favors the Bull Run blend, both of which are Berry Coffee blends. Uh, we need to get out and see their new roaster whenever the time is right for that. So check out BarryCoffee.com. Check out all the different things they can do for you your business, your restaurant, or your bar, berrycoffee.com. Yeah, the other aspect of the coal thing, and listen, I understand why people like bright, shiny objects and why people want the twins to shoot for the best. You know, it's it's human nature, and it's it's a fun part of sports. What would this team look like if you had Jarrett Cole? It's a very natural thing to, to muse over. I can't – here's the thing. The Astros play in the third or fourth largest market in America. I mean, you know – it, they're not the dinky little Houston Astros playing in the Astrodome and wearing funny colors anymore. They are a powerhouse and their goal is to win the world series every year. I have trouble believing that the Houston Astros are going to get outbid by the Minnesota twins. Maybe they get outbid by the Yankees or the Dodgers. I have trouble believing they're going to outbid by the Minnesota twins under any circumstances. Well, I think that's right. I mean, I think that's just the, re- the reality of it at some point in time no matter how much money an owner has from a business standpoint, you have to say what's best for our ball club. And certainly having Cole as your number one starter is going to boost you immeasurably uh, in terms of your chances of, of going deep in the, in the, of, of winning your division, going deep in, in the postseason. But there are, it's, it's not as simple as, as saying, we're just going to we're going to add one guy and pay him 30 million bucks a year and that's going to do it. It may do it. It has a pretty good chance of doing it. But on the other hand, it's not going to do it if you can't at some point in time pay a lot of other players as we as we see not only with the Twins, but all the teams in the postseason, uh all of those players start accumulating big contracts and the depth that's needed to finish a season and to finish a postseason is pretty substantial. And you, I mean, once you start paying somebody 30 million bucks a year, you subtract that from whatever your top number is. And it's, and, and it's, it starts getting difficult to compete year in year out to, to be on track with your plan of saying, we're going to give this community a contending team every year for the next 10 years. It, it gets very hard to do that. So, you know, as a practical matter, be hard. You're absolutely right. Be very hard for the Twins to to outbid uh, any of the teams uh, mentioned. And at some point in time, you have to make a determination about if we give one player this amount of money, what does that look like three years from now as we're starting to pay, uh, you know, some other guys, and uh, or even or even next year. So it, the, it's it's a tough issue. And I brought this up before. I know just in some private conversations or, you know, I guess off the record conversations, there's chats, whatever I've had with upper management with the twins. One thing they always throw at me is, you know, you have to understand that. And, you know, because it was casual and I wasn't writing anything down, I don't have the exact stat, but they have a stat that they kick around where basically if you teams that pay a huge percentage of their payroll to one player. I can't remember if it's 20, 25, 30%, whatever it is. Over the last 20 years, like one has won a World Series or one has gotten to a World Series. It just, it it seems like it's a good thing to go out and spend a lot of money on one free agent. In reality, uh, unless, you can, unless you can spend enough on your total payroll to make that large contract a relatively small part of your payroll, teams don't win. And that's where I think the Harper Machado uh, you know, comparison comes in, you know, going out and, and making everybody excited in February doesn't necessarily translate to good teams. You know, now, you know, the, and again, this is complex. The flip side of that is the nationals were able to give Scherzer a large contract. They're able to give Corbin a large contract, but not so large that they dominated the entire roster. That's exactly right. And it, when they dominate, I didn't know about the statistic, but it, it just goes hand in hand with, 
with what I'm saying. It's it, it's hard to win in any one given year when one player dominates the payroll, and it's certainly hard to build an organization that's going to win year after year when one when one contract.